the side slip angle defined in the traditional aerodynamic angles is uh, beta. And uh, that's the angle between the stability coordinates. Remember, the stability coordinates are the, the uh, coordinates that go from body fixed. They're rotated by alpha down to this dashed line here. That's the stability coordinate system. So it's the angle between that coordinate system and the, um, and the wind coordinate system, which is the direction that the velocity is actually in. So, so this is the angle beta that is uh, traditionally used. Now that's not the only way to uh, specify a side slip angle. An alternate way is to look at just the V component of velocity compared to the U component of velocity in the same way that alpha compares the W component of velocity to the U component of velocity. And so that, uh, when we use V and U instead, that's called the flank angle, and that's the angle right here. Okay, so the traditional beta is defined as the arc sine of little v over capital V, and the, uh, the flank angle, beta sub f, is defined as the arc tangent of v over u. And uh, this is really the analog to, uh, to angle of attack, uh, this, this flank angle. Okay, so each of these are used in different uh, scenarios, and there's not one right or wrong um, uh, angle here. It's just that uh, they come in useful in different times. So the important thing is to know which angle you are uh, using in your development so that you're applying things correctly. So, for example, um, the traditional uh, side slip angle is often the angle that is measured in a wind tunnel. And that's because of how uh, how data is usually collected in a wind tunnel and how the model is rotated relative to the wind. Uh, but the the flank angle is uh, often the the angle of interest actually in a flight test uh, because that's the angle that a wind vane would uh, measure. So we'll put wind vane in a in a flight test. Okay, and. Uh, uh, also, the the uh, flank angle is is sometimes used in analytic work uh, because it's the direct analog to the um, to the angle of attack, and um, and then finally, uh, if if you're looking at an axisymmetric geometry, so something like a rocket or an arrow, uh, something that's axisymmetric, the flank angle can often make more sense because then uh, if you're at say a, a forty five degree angle um, where you have some of that is coming from alpha and some of that's coming from beta. Let's say it's coming half and half from alpha and beta relative to your coordinate system. That would mean that alpha and beta flank are actually the same angle where uh, if you were at 45 degrees and uh, part of that was from alpha and part of that was from beta of the traditional uh, side slip angle, then uh, those would not necessarily be equivalent even if you're at, uh, even if your velocity is coming in at a 45 degree angle from your coordinate system. So uh, anyway, so this is uh, really helpful for axisymmetric geometries. Okay, and, um, uh, and, and maybe I can just try to explain one more time uh, for, for an axisymmetric geometry. Uh, let's say that we have some, some geometry that looks like this somehow and and uh, our body fixed coordinate system is in this direction, so x sub b, and then we've got a, a y sub b coming out this side. Well, let's say that the, the velocity vector is, um, is coming in from, uh, uh, from um, some angle here. And, uh, and if that's offset from, um, uh, well, if we just look at the, the u and v components here, um, so, so this is the, the W and uh, the V components here, so W and V, and then uh, the, the U component is here. Uh, anyway, you, you can, uh, hopefully you can kind of see what I'm saying, that uh, if you have equivalent U and V components, then uh, excuse me, uh, W and V components. If those are the t are the same, so let's say that W 
equals v, then uh, then that means that alpha uh, is equal to beta flank. Okay, so so uh, so your angle of attack and your side slip angle or your your flank angle are the same, uh, where in uh, where the traditional beta uh, would actually be different. So. Anyway, you can think more about that. But uh, so let's look at this flank angle just a little bit uh, more closely. So uh, we know that uh, that the velocity uh, magnitude squared is equal to u squared plus v squared plus w squared, and um, we can we can use uh, the definition of the flank angle to show that uh, our little v is equal to u times the tangent of beta f, and uh, we know that w, from the uh, traditional definition of uh, angle of attack, is equal to u times the tangent of alpha, okay? So again, you can see the symmetry here between v and w, how those are treated uh, with the angle of attack and the flank angle. Okay, so if we plug these, uh, these definitions into this equation, and then do a bunch of rearranging. I'm not going to work through it, uh, but you can show that uh, u, v, and w components, if you were given the flank angle, you can compute the u, v, and w component uh, from this equation here. So we have the, the total velocity magnitude divided by 1 minus uh, sine of alpha squared times sine of beta flank squared multiplied by uh, cosine alpha, cosine beta flank, uh, cosine alpha sine of beta flank, and sine alpha cosine beta flank for the u, v, and w components. From the traditional definition of beta, uh, so this is the traditional definition of beta, um, you can show that uh, u is equal to v times cosine alpha times cosine beta, and uh, little v is equal to uh, capital V times sine of beta. Okay, so uh, we can use this information in um, in our uh, in our definition for beta flank, so beta flank, uh, remember from from right up here, is equal to the arc tangent, so tangent minus one of v over u. So now I'm going to plug in these guys into here, uh, so we can get a relationship between beta flank and the traditional beta. So uh, when we plug that in, we're going to get uh, so v divided by u. So the the, the capital V's are going to uh, cancel out. And we'll be left with sine of beta divided by cosine alpha times cosine of beta. Okay, so we can rearrange this to show that tangent of beta flank is equal to, um, uh, what is that? That's the uh, tangent of beta divided by the cosine of alpha. Okay. So this is a relationship between the two. So uh, so if you're given one, you can find the other quite easily from this relationship here. And uh, you can also see that at small angles of attack, as cosine alpha uh, goes to zero, or excuse me, as alpha goes to zero, cosine of alpha goes to one. And so for small angles of attack, they are very similar. But at large angles of attack, they can be significantly different. So the key here is just simply to know which uh, form of uh, side slip angle you are using and make sure that you're applying it correctly.